Alain, obrigado, tá? Por ceder a vez aí. Oh, oh, tudo bem. So maybe, maybe you know, just, just because the, the time is very uh, kind of restricted, uh, let's try to play just the exposition, you know, uh, to the development, let's say, okay? Okay. Or maybe, yeah, maybe we'll see. Maybe, maybe just the, the, the half of the first moment. Okay, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm Sorry? listening to you. Okay. Go ahead, I'm listening to you. Yeah, maybe, 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 that, maybe, maybe that's enough. <laughs> um, uh, yes. Uh, this one side, I'm going to translate. Uh, o, o professor Marcin, ele tinha pedido para o Jeffrey tocar só o primeir, a primeira parte dessa sonata, que é a sonata em homenagem ao boqueirinho do Tedesco, a, a exposição do tema. E aí ele falou que vai é, trabalhar em cima desse, 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 dessa parte. Ok, you, your playing is really wonderful, and uh, you have beautiful uh, technique great great uh, scales i mean it's uh, it's really enjoyable to listen how the music flow when you play it very very nice thank you ah ele disse que o Jeff toca muito bem que é muito musical tem uma técnica impecável que é muito prazeroso escutar ele tocando yes so uh, but uh, or maybe also just because uh, you have no kind of restrictions in a, in a technique sometimes i have a feeling like you go you go through some elements too quickly too fast and as the example i uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the about the the first theme the first subject ah, ele disse que como o Jeffrey tem uma, uma facilidade técnica muito grande às vezes ele é, vai vai direto é, assim acho que não dando devido valor a algumas notas assim acho que é, é muito fácil para ele tocar Yes, so uh, I, I would like to I would like to, to to offer you a little bit different perspective to this uh, subject to this theme. So it's it, in my opinion, it uh, we have to fight for a little bit more elegant style, a little bit more uh, more dignity and less scherzando, less ironical, less uh, less funny. So basically, if you play it very much in a, in the tempo, you know, like everything is kind of connected quick and that goes very fast and uh, at the moment you start to separate these two elements like the the d with the ornament and another element which is this then 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 the team can can get a little bit more air between a little bit more dignity and maybe it will sound a little more like sorry i don't play the piece so i'm just improvising now more like so 
something like uh, ti ri pa pa ti ti pa pa ti ti pa pa pa. More more like more like persp uh, different different perspective, like two players rather than one stream. Because what is happening in your playing a little bit is that you kind of rush on this, and it sounds very much like. Like you, you focus always to to, to go ahead. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Just Sorry, a I second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I get lost as well. Uh, o o Marcy falou de oferecer uma uma nova perspectiva, uma perspectiva mais elegante na hora que ele está tocando, que às vezes na hora que o Jeff está tocando, ele vai muito direto ao ponto e nessa, nessa sonata ele poderia nessa, nessa exposição do tema ele poderia ter meio que como se fosse um jogo de duas vozes. Basicamente foi isso que ele falou. For example, if, if if you if you just try to play only the chords, the you know D major, E major, try. Yes, and what 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 we need here, we need uh, exactly the same articulation, exactly the same uh, dynamic. So it's not like, or, but just. Right? So, so maybe even to, 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 to get this feeling, maybe you can repeat it several times so you can hear very much that it's exactly the same articulation on the same level without any accents or without any impulses. Okay. Uh, o, o, o Mar... oh, desculpa, Jeffrey. Deixa eu traduzir, senão eu vou acabar esquecendo. Ele falou que basicamente é para o Jeffrey ter mais é, uniformidade na hora que ele está tocando esses motivos. É, para não ter tanto desnível na questão do volume e desníveis tímbricos. So, so, so really having having uh, having a beautiful control on the sonority, articulation, and and level. And then another thing would be to have to have kind of fun with the with the re, with the D. So it's not always not, not always on the same level. But let's say the first one maybe can be a little more optimistic, right? I'm I'm just also uh, showing this with my with my body, so you understand the the direction of this a little bit more. So basically, instead of instead of having this uh, very mechanical on the same level, I try I try to make a delicate difference between some some D, like the opening D, that maybe a little bit more. I'm afraid, you know, if someone is playing on the level level that, that you play, I'm afraid to use a very simple uh, words like play it louder or softer. I, I would say there is there is a little bit more intensity in the first one, maybe in the second one a little bit more question mark, and um, yeah, all those nuances that that uh, that we can we enjoy in the music, right? So you see the difference between the first one, right? It goes very open. Maybe more, more, more stable, more still. This, the, the, those elements, I think, are um, kind of important to to present this, this sonata a little bit in a, in a in a Boccherini style, in a in a, in a very you know elegant with a lot of dignity. Not so, not so much ironic and not so much staccato. You know, Tedesco used a lot of dots in <laughs> in this piece. Everywhere staccato, staccato, but. We all know that it's not what he really meant. You know? He meant probably something very light. Not, not necessarily this aggressive. This aggressive staccato. But you don't play like this, so so that's absolutely absolutely fine. And another thing um, about the Tedesco scores is that I don't know if you have the same feeling, but I always have very strange feeling about all the crescendo, the crescendo indications, you know, this science. Sometimes I have a feeling like they are completely wrong, completely ridiculous, over, 
over over uh, over over he's overdoing this right it's all everywhere in each in each bar there are some indications and actually most of the indications are a little bit against against the music like for example the the, sec the second thing here right just because we just because we are influenced by the crescendo we are forced to play something like which probably you agree with me that it's not what the what the music is telling us right it's not it's not the what the character of the of the of the of the music is showing and even if i play uh, cello or violin <clears throat> or if i sing this i would i would maybe doing crescendo i would sing like four, four. You know, with with kind of decrescendo on the rev, but never. Right? So I, I highly recommend to you just to ignore it. <laughs> just to ignore it. And uh, I remember that uh, some years ago I, I was talking to someone about this and they told me just that it was the way of publishing the, the music that for, you know, for each single uh, indication in the score uh, by publisher, the, the composer was getting money, you know? So he asked his wife, let's say, Let, please put everywhere, you know, when the melody goes up, put the crescendo, when the melody goes down, make the decrescendo, and this makes the scores look better and more and more intense. Because bas basically, that's the only one idea that it is behind the crescendo and decrescendo marks. The melody goes up, crescendo, the melody goes down, decrescendo. How stupid it is, how banal it is, how horrible it is, actually, right? <laughs> so, Maxim, give, give, give me this one second to translate the I got, I got lost. Sorry okay. about it. But, but it speaks very well English, but you translate it for another, for another people, right? Or... Yeah, 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 so I translate it for the other members of the room. Uh, Bom, na primeira parte, o Marcin estava falando do, do caráter da música, dessa sonata do Tedesco, é para ter um, um, um caráter mais elegante, então não era para ser uma coisa tão estacato, assim, daquelas notas, mas era para ter uma, uma questão de uma direção, uh, mesmo quando está tendo a mesma nota. Ah, eu, desculpa, eu perdi um pouco, ele falou bastante, na segunda parte ele falou que as, as edições do, do Tedesco, elas têm excesso de dinâmica, que muitas vezes são desnecessárias, que às vezes vão até contra o, a ideia musical, do, do, do próprio texto musical das notas. Ok, thank you. Uh, uh, yes, so, but, but what, what do you think, actually, I didn't ask you about, about this thing here. When we, when we just played and when, when we are looking for a, let's say, contrasting uh, character to the opening, then of course, probably nobody would play it with a crescendo at the end there, right? Don't you think so, Jeffrey? Alan, pode me ajudar? Eu não entendi bem o final que ele disse. You didn't hear me? No, I'm, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm asking about your personal feelings about this. Yes, and just try, try just for me to, to play it as a decrescendo. No. Yes, and also, and also, it, 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 uh, I, I think it can be much more much more uh, lyrical, much more expressive, so not this kind of... I think it's it's not it's not necessary to give such an accent at the beginning. Just start peaceful, you know, like just like this. Yes, and of course, of course, um, uh, 
the 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 the, <clears throat> the fact of the, of uh, having this uh, motif, this material here, uh, appears a little bit earlier or here. This is a very, very unexpected end of the of the first of the first uh, uh, subject, right? Because we just go. Can I listen one more time how we do this? How we play this? Jeff, the... só um minutinho, só um minuto. Deixa eu traduzir. Okay. Uh, na, na primeira parte, o Marcin perguntou qual que era o a, a, o sentimento do, do Jeffrey em relação à, à frase que ele estava tocando, e ele sugeriu de não tocar com, com tanta ênfase, com tanto acento, é, com tanta, é, tão forte a primeira nota, para ser uma coisa um pouco mais sutil. E agora ele está pedindo para o é, Jeffrey tocar novamente. Uh, from the beginning. One more time from the beginning, yes. Yes. So, so actually, if you consider that the, the fa fa re is one motif at the end, try try not to separate the the the, the f from d. You no, know, because you play like these two chords are connected molto legato, uh, and and then the jump, and then then there is a break. So so what we have to do is just to find. Um, equal uh, articulation. If you want to play a bit more non-legato, that's fine. Legato is also possible. All what you have to do, I don't know if you can see this, that you leave this finger. Yeah. Bravo. And in this case, we have the feeling like all the three chords are exactly connected legato with the same with the same uh, articulation, right? That, that that's kind of important because actually this this was not your interpretation; it was just more like a interpretation of your fingers, right? This. I don't know if you can if you can hear me. Yes, oh. but but uh, the important thing in the first in the first subject. Really, I mean, if you record yourself, you will recognize that the distance between the D and the chords, you always make it shorter and shorter, smaller and smaller, like this. Like you really almost rush, you know, and, and, and um, what I want is not really a break, but like to have a two players. So it's not but right. So there is this this small perspective. You look look left, right. Okay. This this definitely will will give you a much more dignity and much more elegance in a, in the opening. Okay. So. Um, Let's try it from from the from from this lyrical part here. So, so, so minute, uh, just one second, Martin. Sorry for keep interrupting you. I'm afraid to get lost during the translation. Uh, o Martin falou a princípio que basicamente os dedos do, do, do Jeffrey estavam guiando ele e não um, uma intenção musical né, nessa nessa frase de três acordes. Então ele estava falando que mesmo que fosse com uma, uma, uma intenção em staccato ou com uma intenção mais legato, é, é importante que o, o Jeffrey tenha o controle, não que os dedos o guiem. Yeah, yeah, basicamente foi isso. Do you think it would be possible, for example, to, to, to play the D on the fifth string, like here? Oh, sorry, listen. No, 
already not, eh? This is too far. That was nice. One more time, okay? I will listen carefully what you do. Okay, you know, uh, so of course, when you look at the score, you see that there is this bass line going. And the upper voice. But unfortunately, because of these fingerings, we do the kind of compromise. Right? So uh, when, when you do the slur, please make sure that the F is a little bit longer and not shorter. Because, because of playing the slur, you have the tendency to play like this. A little bit Brazilian style, I would say. <laughs> you know, this kind of... <laughs> no, just, just kidding. But, but actually, we, we, have, we must get a completely opposite feeling, like exaggera exaggerating the F, like letting it ring a little bit longer. And me. So in the last in the last possible moment you, you play the slur. Okay, ele falou que uh, desculpa, Jeffrey. Ele falou que quando o, o Jeffrey tá tocando esse legado de uh, 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 legado de F, acho que para mim, ele por, por uma, uma, uma questão técnica, ele tá deixando o, o F o, o fá uh, mais, mais curto. E é, e é para ser exatamente o oposto. O, o fá deve ter uma, uma ressonância maior. Yes, and and you know you, you still have the tendency to put a here. Of course, now maybe. But uh, but at the moment you put the accent on the D, this, uh, this 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 theme is becoming a little bit more rhythmical and less lyrical. And actually, this is this one is is quite rhythmical. So we are looking for something contrasting. You know, you know what I mean, right? Um, sometimes, sometimes it's very difficult to to change our habit or change our way of playing, and we have to exaggerate, and then you discover something very nice, something very positive. Okay, ele disse que, que por a questão técnica nos nos slurs, no, dos ligados, nessa segunda parte, o Jeff está meio que deixando essa sessão com com caráter mais rítmico e, e, de, e deveria ser um caráter mais melódico para fazer mais lírico, fazer um contraste com a primeira parte que já é bem rítmica. Aproveitando, é dois minutos, two minutes. Okay, and um, the, the the last thing, because uh, as I said at the beginning, you you have very impressive, very fine technique and. Uh, also, uh, your musicality is very interesting. You, everything goes uh, quick, nice, and easy, and that's something positive. But be careful not to um, not to repeat things in a me mechanical way. I give you an example. For example, when you have the section that is seems to be the same, like this one. Of course, when, when someone has no restriction with the, with the technique, it's easy just to play like this. But then uh, the listeners will get the feeling of a little bit maybe too technical to, yeah, too technical approach to this. And, and, not, and, and your obli obligation here is somehow to find the, the dramaturgy in this part. So it's not just slurs repeated all the time, but there must be something. For example, I don't know. Uh, Right? So the first one goes ahead. And then what's there? This gives maybe.
maybe a little bit more something something charming and then so basically like the same the same group this the same uh, the same motif uh, gets different colors gets different dramaturgy and because of this actually we achieve something what we call a big line because you know play, playing the same motif with a different colors creates uh, uh, at the listeners the feeling of a uh, dramaturgy going somewhere uh, reaching some uh, different emotions and not being repeated and i think uh, and, and I think that's that's uh, that's something what you can just enjoy practicing. But the last last sentence, the way to practice this is really uh, not to play from the beginning till the end, not to play, not to follow the same paths, but really separating this. For example, it's sometimes it's enough to play just the chords, right? Or it is. We cannot say which one is louder uh, or softer, but definitely there is a relation between the, the, those two. And then maybe just this, this section. <laughs> Something like this. So uh, I'm sorry for such a brief, uh, it was really nice to, you know, nice to meet you, Jeffrey. I know that this kind of uh, classes are just, you know, to say hi and goodbye, but, uh, but I, I, I'm happy that I could listen to you. Beautiful playing and uh, try. I, I hope I, I gave you some ideas. Okay. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet you. Obrigado, Leo. Obrigado, Alan, pela ajuda. Imagine. Um, agora na 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 parte final, o, o Marcin ele disse pro que como o Jeffrey tem uma técnica muito muito boa assim às vezes acaba soando uma coisa mais técnica, uma, uma coisa, um, um, quando ele está tocando é mais... É, a palavra não é robótico, assim, mas é, é, um, é uma questão mais técnica, sou como quase que exercício, ao invés de só como uma, uma frase mais apelativa, uma, uma questão mais melódica. Então ele sugeriu o Jeffrey para ter uma, uma, uma prática diferente enquanto ele está estudando, para não depender tanto só da técnica, mas da musicalidade dele. Ok. Muito bom. So, é, a... uh, ele agora... perguntou quem que é o próximo. Oi? Ele perguntou quem que é o próximo. Então, é você. Se você quiser, ah. na ordem, é você. Depois nós temos o Juan, o Leonardo e o Rafael. Tá, eu, eu vou tocar então. Tá? Beleza. So, uh, I, I am the next, Marcin. Great. So, uh, I gonna uh, let me find a better angle, then you can see me properly. Yes. And what piece do you play? I play the first movement of the Sonata Brillante, Mauro Giuliani. Giuliani, great. Yes. Like when I saw you playing this piece, I fell in love with this piece. I say, oh, I must play it as well. Thank you. That's nice. It's a it's a it's a beautiful piece, but I have to tell I have to tell you one thing. It's not easy piece at all. Yeah, yeah. It's a very you know, complicated very, one. Very often uh, people consider this Opus 15 as a very simple music. And I, I saw many, many kids playing this piece. But at the moment you want to play it on a, on a good a good level, you just see how, how difficult it is. So, yeah, don't, don't be disappointed if, uh, you know, if, if, if you thought it's easy because it's not. <laughs> So. No, it's not easy. Technically, musically, I think it's very challenging. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
maybe it's a good moment to stop. Okay. 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 Sure. Great. Uh, co compliments. Co uh, congratulations. Uh, very nice. Um, I, I would like to dedicate a little time to something what uh, what is um, what we all know very well and what we hear very often from our teachers. Uh, what I mean is uh, how important it is to play just the melody or to sing just the melody. And here's here here's a, here's a good example. When you start to play this piece, uh, when you start to learn this piece from the very beginning, playing everything, both accompaniment and the melody, you you kind of uh, you deal with uh, many technical problems, many te technical issues, and don't think so much about the shape, the phrase of the melody, right? Because Everything changed here. So we have the tendency to put the accents on the downbeat. We have the tendency to uh, to put the accent each time there is a change of the of the of the harmony, or we we change the fingerings, right? And and actually, uh, this this technical aspect starts to determine uh, uh, our way of listening to this uh, to this music. At the moment, you allowed yourself to play just the melody, suddenly you, see, you, ask, you ask the question, okay, where is the climax of the phrase? Where is the, the accents? Right? The very funny, very ironic thing is that the C major sonata starts with a C sharp, <laughs> right? So it's not... Right? The C sharp, of course, uh, is a is a is a leading note to the D is a is a is a note with a particular tension. So when we play just the melody and we want to shape it, then of course the C sharp on the upbeat would be much louder than than the Do, the C natural on the downbeat. Right, and then playing the simple melody, suddenly you can you can shape it as you want. You can you can experiment with articulation. Right, it start. It's suddenly playing just the melody is the is the idea that. You can do something uh, easy, something without any restrictions, without any restrictions of the accompaniment of the harmony. We can you can use any finger you want, and this definitely must help you to to decide about the musical interpretation, right? And 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 here's the place that you use your fantasy, you use your uh, uh, creativity, your imagination to shape it. The, in, a, in a personal way. At the moment you play everything, uh, it looks like all the technical issues, all the difficulties of uh, the complexity of the piece, they, they start to determine your way of listening. And instead of playing with, yeah. Okay, you can translate them. Okay. Um, uh, well, everybody's everybody's uh, pela, pela, pelas questões de dificuldade técnica dessa música, eu estou deixando elas meio que influenciarem como eu estou fazendo o fraseado, que se para eu, numa sonata como essa, que tem duas linhas distintas, para eu tocar a melodia é, separado, que aí ficaria mais fácil, aí e, e usar minha imaginação com a melodia, aí depois disso eu posso pensar em como fazer, como frasear, assim, escolher algumas a questões musicais como fazer as frases. Yes. And and you know the the very funny thing is that uh, this idea about singing just the melody about playing just the melody that's something what we all know that's something what all our teachers uh, are telling us and this is something what we never do. <laughs> so you really have to trust in this. And if I if I may just ask you to try to play just a simple melody, you know the, the let's say the first phrase only the melody, okay? So. So, 
So, so try, uh, try, try to give a I'm little sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes, try to give a little bit more input to the C sharp. I don't want to say loud, but just something like this. So it's almost bravo. It's almost like you 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 push the C sharp, right? It's dore, dore. And and then of course immediately we have also the question how to play the the C natural the do legato or maybe. The, the non legato is kind of very, very interesting, also, right? So, you know, but this, this kind of staccato or this kind of non legato that is not accented because we don't, we don't want something like this, right? No, the hey door must be. Very smooth crescendo. And so we have pam. Right? It's a it's a it's a such such a beautiful, elegant classical narration. Right? Not like ta 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 tam ti ta 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 tam. Okay. Would you like to try to play this? The the last bar in the first line. Absolutely, but you know when 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 you when you practice this, it's it's um, it's not just about uh, you know playing playing playing, but shaping the phrase. Let's say shaping the phrase all the time. Smooth crescendo and two two groups. Can you please? Yes. Sorry, it's just at the uh, it's B. Yes, but this you play and I want so every second is accented, right? Sire Dona Sol. Sorry, once, once more. Sorry. No, and so let, let me let me tell you another also thing. Uh, this uh, reducing the piece just to play the melody sh should this should be a kind of reduction, right? It, it must be more easy. But why it's not? Why it's not easy? Why when the teachers are asking us to play just the melody, suddenly uh, we don't know what we play. We don't know the notes. We don't know the, uh, the, the intervals are there, right? Why? Just because most of the time when we practice, our brain is not active, but our fingers are active. So 90% of our practicing is just a manual practicing, manual memories manual move, uh, movements, we think about something else and we let, uh, we, we let our fingers repeat the same, uh, you know, combinations, fingering scales. So suddenly uh, changing this, this process of practicing, uh, reducing the, the practicing to play just the accompaniment or the melody 
is a wonderful exercise for our brain also to, to, to know what you play, to memorize, to discover some things, because suddenly we break with this manual exercise only. And this, this is very important, actually. Um, ele, uh, ele falou que uma, uma coisa que é muito importante que eu estou tendo problema agora é que eu dependo muito da minha coordenação mecânica e que eu deveria não, não deveria ser assim na parte que a gente na hora que nós estamos estudando que a gente deveria é, estudar mais com o cérebro não tanto com, com os dedos. Ok. And then, of course, of course, uh, it, it's going to be also very, very exciting. If you do the same with the bass, right? Right? It's it's just something what what sounds to us like a new piece. Do I play it really? <laughs> dealing just with a simple line you start to be much more creative and for example it came right now to me that this idea of playing the bass a little bit more non legato at the end right so actually the what makes the interpretation or, or what makes the performers performance something very unique in the classical music is the quality right the quality of the player each single element uh, phrasing sound quality uh, articulation all the elements of the the musical world uh, should be on on the highest level so if you are thinking about improving your technique actually The, the most beautiful way of improving technique is uh, is uh, is uh, fighting for the music, because actually when you decide when you decide to play the three notes in a bass, the first bar in the second line, non legato, of course this is a musical idea, but this provokes a technical question: How do I stop the notes? How do I cut it right? With the right hand, with the left hand, and just this, uh, this, this discovery that you are doing kind of articulation, that you want to damp the, the the nose, that you would like to create a unique articulation. This uh, this provokes a wonderful, uh, passionate way of practicing that has nothing to do with uh, you know stupid scales, exercises, or whatever. No, it's just combination of a musical idea and the technical execution, which, which I think is the most fascinating in our profession, that we don't do kind of mechanical things, we just always do something creative and, and unique. Because uh, going to the, to, the, to the top melody again, to play the, the last bar in the first line, la si do, la si do, do re, smooth, smoothly crescendo, it's not easy. It's not easy. It requires you know, good technique. So it, it is something to practice. And then having si, re, do, la, sol. Uh, loud, loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft. This is also not easy, right? Then, then you, you, you have to control your fingers that the B is stronger, is softer. And, and if you do it in a musical way, you also discover that, okay, 
the C and the Do. I don't know, do you use in the Brazil Do, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, C, or? Uh, I live in Ireland, so here we use like A, a B, C, D, F. Okay, so, so, so B and C are louder than D and the, and the A, right? They are not equal. Ta, 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 ta. Uh, so those those are the the, the, the the small very fine elements they are uh, they are coming from uh, from our musical idea and they require uh, really technical exercise exercises and uh, but they are to discover just if you if you deal with a simple melody you know and you try to to sing it you try to play it in a, in, a, in a different ways at the moment you play everything together from the very beginning all those nuances that they uh, create a high quality performance are kind of lost. <laughs> um, yes, I got you. Yes. No, that sounds very exciting, Marcin, to practice like, as you say, not as an exercise, but uh, a music exercise to get these appoggiaturas, all these things, elements inside yes. the music. You know, when, 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 I, when, I, when I sit with my students in one room, of course, I see much more and I hear much better via internet. I don't know how, how is my connection there, but, you know, it's, 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 it's just so difficult to, to uh, recognize what is the mistake, how your fingers is working. I hardly see your fingers. I just see that you play the guitar. That just please forgive me for, for being such a general, but I think, uh, you know, to be general. Well, I understand. Your, your tips were very valuable, so I'm gonna do what you say to, to, to shape better, especially the main team. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and 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 uh, and just uh, if I if I may ask you uh, at the end to play accompaniment only. Now take a look at the, at the scores. There is not much happening, but still to have a beautiful balance between because you played with the P and I, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so listen how, how difficult it is to control the P not to be too loud and to, to have nice index to balance so it, this is on the same level. Would you like to try to play? Just the, just the accompaniment, no melody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, the connection was so bad that I didn't hear anything. But... I'm sorry, I, I play on smart then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, I did a mistake, but yes. But, but you I, see, you see. Uh, another very beautiful, beautiful um, idea in um, for, for 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 our lives is that if something is if something is difficult for you, if something is challenging for you, and you you are trying to challenge yourself with this problem, it means that you are making a progress. You know, if you are, if you are hiding the if you are hiding the the problems under the carpet, or you are trying not to see them. Uh, it maybe gives you a better feeling for um, for a day, but actually at the end you know that you didn't uh, you didn't develop at all. So uh, finding the fi finding the way of practicing that is uncomfortable for us, uh, that opens a different door, gives us different perspective to the piece, is absolutely absolutely important. And um, and please try to use it because as you see in this class. The, uh, just to play independent voices is something what is not as simple as it should be. Okay, I see you, Leonardo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can you can maybe translate what I said and and we can finish. Okay. No, no, it, it was fair enough. I'm very glad for uh, for what you you've said. So I've got something to to focus from now and on. Okay, cool, great. So thank you for thank you for playing uh, for me, and you stay you stay with us, right? Trying to translate something to, to the uh, another. Yes. yes? Okay, thank you. Thank so, you. 
Oh, <laughs> do you have a Polish girlfriend? No, I work in a, in a school that most of my students are children of Polish. So I know some phrases and words in, in Polish. Ah, that's interesting. Próximo agora, Juan Manuel. Boa tarde a todos. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to play a grand solo by Fernando Sor. Mm -hmm.
great. Maybe we we stop here, right? So yeah. so we don't waste too much time. Hey, very impressive playing, very beautiful, great, great, it's really cool. Uh, first general uh, first general uh, impression. If you are playing forte or some very uh, loud aggressive chords, try not to be angry. Try not to be aggressive, but rather try to be. Uh, more more elegant with more dignity you know not pa, pa, but more pom pa. it's it's uh, of course i'm talking about just 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 the already the opening chords right Say like this one not, i i have i have a feeling like this um, this uh, this feeling of being uh, aggressive or angry just doesn't fit this this music you know, so so maybe maybe the articulation not as sharp as you play, not as short, but a little bit longer. So, and the second one uh, is uh, because how how do you play the chords? Can can you play for us one more time? Yeah, so it's it it sounds like the first one is very very short. This this probably gives this 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 meaning of being a little bit aggressive, and also something what I cannot judge through the internet, but always control the, the the quality of your sound. You know, if if the sound is becoming too percussive or the guitar is not really sounding rich and nice, then it's it means maybe that you have to go a little bit delicate. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay Marcin, let me translate. Uh, oh. Uh, ele disse que o Juan toca muito bem, tem uma técnica impressionante e ele está só ele está dando um toque sobre né, na questão dos fortes que nessa música é para ser um, um forte mais elegante, não um forte tão agressivo que isso ficaria meio fora do caráter da música. Would you like to try just 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 the first two phrases from the beginning, okay? Okay, already, already, uh, bravo, very, very, very nice. I'm just thinking about just the opening. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of important, even if you play piano, everything, and everything is kind of lyrical, quiet, to have a clear direction, not to play like, like this. Right, not following the downbeat, but let's say you start the, the D minor, you play a little bit, softer and then it goes into the uh, into this right so we have and then the c sharp is a kind of surprise so we don't play just or slightly slightly later with a small delay small hesitation Right, and we have and and also the the way you cut the chord forte fortissimo, no so well, but just more like him him. So so you you damp it uh, in the way that everyone understands that you you it's not. Over is just the beginning. Tim, tim. <laughs> kind of keeping the tension, you know, keeping the energy of the of the chord by unexpected damping. But okay, let's let's just start start the beginning and and find a nice direction into the into the second three eights, right? It's to the to, to this one. Can you, can you start one more time from the beginning? Oh, we have bad connection, I think. Okay, can you hear I now? think I had a problem with the internet. Okay, now now you are okay. Uh-huh, I, I, I hope so. 
Okay, so try one more time from the beginning and find a nice direction into, into this group. Right? So the first is soft, then even softer, and... Yes, very nice. Okay. Yes. It, uh, you know, the, the, the artistic freedom means that we can try different options. The artistic freedom means is that you can you can you can experiment. So just because you play it so um, or so much staccato. No, I just for practicing, you know, just to 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 have a different uh, imagination. Try to play it legato, or or non legato, like this. Maybe more more uh, more non legato. Um. This, you know, uh, so when you play these two chords, uh, and you think you think not about dampening the first one, but you think more about preparing the, preparing the second one. You know, so the first one is here, and then so so, so the articulation, the non legato, is happening not because you want to damp the chord, but it's just that you want to prepare another one. Like yes, this. and like this, and remember to cut the chord at the end in a very ah. up, not down, but up. Down to... One, one, one thing, uh, after, each time after this beautiful ornament, you play it so nice. So. But then here, the last chord is always kind of accented. And I think it's just because you are thinking already about the next, right? So you play here. I mean, it's it's it just it's it's mm -hmm. it sounds not like uh, your interpretation. It sounds more like like just uh, getting excited for the next chord and unfortunately making making the Im the impulse on the last chord. Okay, mm -hmm. so one more time from this. Mm -hmm. This is perfect. Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Now, what, what can we do with this? Because it sounds like, uh, you know, repeating the same chord so many times. For example, for example, you can, you can play the first chord and then make kind of subito piano and grow to the to the next one so it's something like this 
Mars, sorry for interrupting you, but uh, uh, most of the people are not understanding. So if you could please go a bit slower to give him some time to translate, it would be, it would be better not. Like Hawaii speaks English, but most of the other people don't. don't. I'm, I'm very sorry, but I'm getting lost to, in what you are saying because I'm also paying attention. Yes, so, so before uh, we just, we just uh, correct the, the last chord of each phrase that Juan was just playing accidentally too loud and he just corrected this so everybody, everyone could hear this, right? That we, we had this. Uh, can, can you show it one more time, Juan, how you did and how you changed it? Okay, I did it uh, like this. Yeah, partic partic particularly the last one was always yeah accepted. the last one uh -huh. but now i'm like Bravo, bravo. Of course, you know, how, how big is the subito piano, uh, subito piano and how big is the crescendo? That's something what must be done. But I think uh, this, uh, so what must be decided by you, uh, but playing this like, maybe it's not as attractive as doing something with the speed, something with the dynamic. Right? So, 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 uh, all chords are kind of intense, but we hear that they are coming from, uh, they are coming as a wave and not as a tank, <laughs> not as a, not as a, uh, as something brutal and, and, and aggressive. Okay. Now, okay, let's, let's play from this part and let's continue. And here, uh, the same thing, like, or uh, well, the pro the yeah. problem is the problem is that even if you have a good idea and you repeat it uh, many times, it's bad. So so prob uh, we cannot do this all the time. Maybe maybe just the first one could be like this. Yes, the second time maybe it could be more uh, more more ahead, more uh, more loud, as as you did before. Okay. Great. Now, now I'm, I'm wondering about the, the, the six, because, because the course we were talking about this, what about the 16s? So again, what, what I would do if I play this piece, I just separate this motif, sol fa mi re fa, sol fa mi re fa, and, and, and just play around with the problem, just try to find uh, kind of different faces for this. How different it could be, like really starting with an impulse on the G, starting without impulse on the G, right? Speeding up, slowing down. So there, are, there are so many, so many extreme uh, versions of this that that you have to you have to uh, see the possibilities and just to construct something that will be. Um, what will be a little bit more alive and not so much re repetitive, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, what I what I show right now is just the extreme examples. What we need in this piece is just a little bit of. And the funny thing is that when the first and the second time you play with kind of rubato or accelerando or crescendo de crescendo, then suddenly the last time, el ultimo tempo can be really pa 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 pam, right? And 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 everyone consider this as a final, as a final, um, final word, final uh, uh, repetition, and 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 that's it. Uh, 
And another thing is that if you are, uh, Alan, would you like to translate? I, I, I'm sorry, Maris, I, I, I got lost. You got lost, okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, uh, th that's that's fine. That's fine. Don't 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 worry. So now now is the point. If this section with the chord, is loud enough, then here, sorry. You can stay really piano, really flat, just change the chords and keep keep the nice tempo, the tempo that seems to be a little bit faster, the tempo that uh, as a, as a, has a meaning of ostinato. You know the ostinato when, when there is a, uh, uh, when the, there is, let's say, opening of any kind of uh, symphony in Mozart height, we have forte, tutti solo, tutti solo, right? Pom, pom, pom. Um, pam, 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 and then it's coming ostinato. And ostinato is always is always creates kind of uh, uh, tension by by being a little bit maybe not slow. This, of course, you know the slightly slower tempo and immediately it's boring. Immediately it just doesn't work. So you have to be very careful with the tempo here. To keep it, to keep it excited. And then you can do nothing with the dynamic, being just flat. Try this, this part. It's, it's uh, very powerful when you do nothing, actually. <laughs> So uh, from from or directly to yes. Okay. <laughs> In, in my opinion, my opinion, you could play this this uh, this part ostinato with the la without any crescendo. Really, just just. Uh... And then maybe when you go down, maybe a little bit, because sorry, uh, two minutes, two minutes. Yes. Okay. The, the crescendo seems to be, you know, natural, but at the same time, it's a little bit banal and makes everything kind of heavy. So it's 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 a um, it's a very powerful expression actually to to stay flat uh, and just the, enjoy the harmony. But to do it, you uh, you have to be quite powerful and quite exciting before mm -hmm. here, and then then you have permission to be quiet and to do nothing, right? Definitely, it will give to the listeners the feeling of a of a big variety of expressions. So you are not always crescendo the crescendo but sometimes you're just flat and doing nothing the last comment about the virtuosity the the the, the quick passages right oh, so it was i don't know maybe maybe another one a little bit further it was very impressive something what i was missing is a control at the end of these uh, passages. You know, the beginning was always great, but then at the end you were just spinning and, and, and going um, a little bit too fast. After, after this class, please make sure 
if you can play just the last group of the passage. Just the last, just the two last groups, you know, let's say the eight last notes from the passage. Because probably you always can play just from the beginning, but not, not from the end. That's how it sounds. It sounds like at the end you are just losing control. But anyway, thank you for playing for me. Uh, sorry for, the, for being so uh, quick. <laughs> and by the way, we have to continue with your colleagues, okay? So, okay. all thank the best. You. My pleasure. Next. Leonardo? Hello. Can Hi. you hear me? I can hear you very well. Okay. I'm going to play Homagia Tarrega from Turina. Uh -huh. uh, do, do you think I played the whole thing or just the first movement? Let's do the, the first movement only, okay? Because, because okay. anyway. Anyway, I don't enjoy <laughs> the music via Zoom or Skype, so you know it's, it's the collection is so hard that it's it's not so enjoyable for me to listen the whole piece. Okay. Okay. Very, very expressive, very, very Spanish, very, very nice. I um, maybe it's just the internet connection, but I was wondering if, if you, if you feel there is any difference between the first rosgado and this one, because actually when you play just the rosgados, right, the, uh, they are both loud, but they are different. Right? I mean the the the. The upbeat it seems to be a little bit I I wouldn't say softer, but but maybe a, a less less tension than the the, the downbeat, and and um, maybe just the opening chord can be uh, less percussive and more sometimes sometimes 
sometimes I, 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 I hear that there's a nice difference between rasgado of the first finger and this one. So this one is always quicker and do you play sometimes with this finger, rasgados? No, nothing. No. Uh, it's, uh, it, I started to play with this finger just to save my nails when I was practicing some piece. And then I realized that actually using this finger it's quite effective because, because you can play a very quick and energetic rasgado. At the same time, all the at the same time all the fingers stay close to the strings, right? With the index, of course, they are far away. Okay, just one second, Marcy. Um, so Martin say that Leonardo has played very well with nice, nice phrase. He's very musical, very expressive, and Mars. Uh, uh, eu tava falando inglês. Ele falou que o, que o, que o Leonardo toca, toca muito bem, muito expressivo, muito musical, a peça está muito bem tocada. E ele está só dando algumas considerações sobre o, o, os rasgueados da primeira parte da música, que tem um que é na, no primeiro beat e outro que é no, no, no contratempo, acho que do terceiro, terceiro beat, não tenho certeza. Então ele está dando algum, um, uma dica de, faz, de como fazer os rasgueados, que quando ele usa o, o mindinho, o dedo 4 da mão direita, ele consegue ir mais rápido às vezes. Isso dá um pouco mais de agilidade para mão, a mão direita, porque ele não precisa mover a mão inteira, quando se ele estivesse fazendo rasgueado só com o um indicador. Então a mão fica mais próxima das cordas para continuar tocando. Yes. But anyway, when, when practicing this, this the, the, the opening section here, for, for me it would be a, a question, how can I, how can I uh, create the difference between the first rasgado chord and the second one? So there's always direction, right? And, So, so this this is, was the only one thing I couldn't really hear through the internet. If you if you really kind of make a difference or or, uh, or not, then those chords were very nice here. Yeah, can you play one more time and maybe 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 can you play just these two chords uh, next to each other to see if there are really uh, some some difference. This card? No, 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 no. Yes, basically, basically, I think you should play both rasgado, huh? no, not, not, not like this. several times because actually first time first time the the uh, the 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 B, B flat was louder than the, the A major Bravo something like this and now everything Everything with the with the sixteen notes also. Play everything from the beginning, please. So where where do you play the last F? Ah, uh, here. Like this. So you don't play the slurs. No, but it sounds nice. And then Okay. And then this uh, I think um, this, 
this uh, uh, this idea of todo pulgar is a kind kind of nice, you know, for women. So each 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 note is kind of uh, indicated with a nice impulse. That's what, you know, basically, I I, I kind of uh, don't like the first slur here. I wouldn't play this, right? I would play the. We have to we have to be very very careful uh, always with the with the fingerings and and uh, this uh, editing of Segovia, uh, especially with the Spanish music, because you know he always wanted to make the Spanish music more like French <laughs> and less like Spanish. Uh, trying to separate, trying to you know uh, to distance himself from flamenco. But if you play, uh, you know. Piece like Garotino and Soleares, which is so much in, influence, influenced by, by flamenco, for me is a is a clear idea that I want to go as close as I as I can to the flamenco and not pretending to be a French elegant uh, music, right? So I think this this slur is a something what what should make le, make it sound less flamenco and more polite. Right? Wow. I will show you that. Yeah. You know this expression in flamenco, todo todo pulgar. It means that this this the style that they all play all with a uh, with a uh, with a uh, It is very very percussive, as you can say. Yeah. Would you like to try it? Uh, the chords before golpe and then with the scale. <laughs> Yeah. Try, try not to play the slayer at the beginning. Sorry, don't, 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 don't play the slayer, don't play this. Yeah. Just. You were twice as fast. <laughs> what? Because of the, you, were, you were twice as fast because of the connection. So try to play one more time because I could <laughs> hear. This is very nice. Very nice. Another aspect is the uh, other chords. So we have. How 
to connect this. Always and one and one. So giving a nice, nice up to the the one. Also to 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 understand this to to feel this tendency to to, to go into the one. You can play it as the chord. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful, um, uh, yeah, ideas about and one. Try right, just the chord. Try to do this. Yeah, only chords, huh? Yeah. Let's see here. It's, we don't we, we don't Unfortunately, the, the, the connection is so bad that it sounds almost it sounds almost like you play louder this. Okay. Let me I'm, see the mic. So very soft. Again, uh, we want to ask the question, so what, what will make uh, the difference between cantando and ritmico, let's say, or cantabile and ritmico? Because if you play... It, it has, the, it has uh, a little more the characteristic of something very rhythmical, but uh, cantabile would be... So, first, for example, the first, the first uh, phrase, F would play soft, right? Very soft. And now, and now, oh, now we reach the climax um, of, the, of the accent. And I think this 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 gives me a feeling of uh, something uh, something lyrical. 
comparing to like this would be a very let's say schematic very repetitive very much the same right so try try to start a little bit more volume from the from the and then fast very fast no more quiet more This one, very soft. <laughs> There's always... Okay. Better. Bravo. So, these two phrases, is, they start also to cooperate with us. The, 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 the first one is a kind of shy. So when, I, when I'm trying to play the chords uh, without an impulse, I, I always try to pre prepare my fingers on the uh, on the strings. First finger on the second. Nice, nice. This will be uh, give give some nice variety and. Now this one. Too repetitive or too too simple. Try try also to, to make a kind of direction. I don't know. So yes, and and once you play like this, immediately you feel. Uh, permission and the desire to play second time as you did, right? Because it's gonna be so the second time with crescendo. Something, yeah. and and of course at the end the 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 the, the difference should be just. Very, very little, very fine, you know, not too obvious, but still give the feeling to the listeners that something is moving, that it's not just repetitive and, and the same. Yeah. Okay, now uh, we have to finish. Two minutes. Well, it's, a, it's a, I, think, I think the biggest challenge in this kind of thing is uh, to select the phrases, the melodies, they are not rhythmical, because you need those not rhythmical passages not rhythmical phases to give a beautiful contrast to the rhythmical part you know because yeah. there, there's so much so much so much rhythm here so so much beautiful uh, uh, expressive rhythmical elements that actually to to get to to get some uh, cantando cantabile to, to get something rhythmical would be a beautiful flavor to uh, and, and i think that's what i was trying to basically tell you it's it's all about organizing the accents, you know, not always following the one and two and one and two, but sometimes thinking about about the line, not so much about the, the metro. Okay? Interesting, okay. Okay. So bravo, thank you very much. And let's let's talk to the last guy who is playing you. the Torroba, I guess, right? What a Rafael Machado. 
Ah. Ah, é, quer que eu faça as considerações, fala as considerações finais da Marcy? Ok, ok. Faz um, um apanhado da aula. Não. Ah, ah ele, 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 bom, eu, eu, eu tenho uma memória muito, eu fico distraído, assim, que às vezes eu fico prestando atenção no que ele está falando e esqueço que, que ele, na hora de traduzir, mas agora no final ele basicamente disse que o, um dos desafios dessa peça, o Garrotin, é que como ela é uma peça muito rítmica, de rasgados, tudo, é, que muitas vezes a, as acentuações mudam durante os compassos, é co a conseguir adicionar um contraste nas partes líricas, nas partes melódicas, né? como ele estava tocando agora. Tam, 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 taram, tam, tam. É, então, para não fazer só as, as melodias soarem rítmicas, mas sim uma parte mais lírica, seria um, esse, a questão do contraste do, da, da, da peça. Ok, obrigado, Alain. Ah, queria só pedir a ajuda do Alan durante a aula, porque eu não entendo inglês. Então, ok. Preciso... Ok. So, uh, uh, Marcin, he asked like if we could go a bit slower because he has some troubles with English. So, I'm gonna translate uh, everything on this lesson. Mm -hmm.
Bravo, very, very nice. You know, what you, what you did at the end gave me some inspiration to, to look for, for something more like this in the whole piece because you played so nicely. So, the same motif, but you played so differently that it was so enjoyable. Ah, ele disse que o jeito que você tocou essa última parte da música foi foi muito bonito, que deu inspiração para ele, que mesmo sendo uma ideia que você já um motivo que você já tinha tocado, você tocou de uma maneira bem diferente, então ficou muito bonito, ele gostou bastante. Ele pensou que, que isso pode ser aplicado em outras partes da música. Yes, for for example, I'm just I'm just wondering if you if you could uh create a different expression for a for the opening phrase and then the second one so basically when we go here but the second time we go so The, the, the first opening, the, the, the opening of the phrase seems to be a little bit straightforward and very obvious, but the second one seems to have a little bit, a little bit something, you know, flavor of uh, wondering, uh, considering something like this. And I would like to, to hear it also in the music. You can translate this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <risos> ele disse que se você na, na primeira parte da música você poderia fazer alguma coisa diferente que na primeira vez nesse, é, nessa primeira frase é uma coisa mais direta mas na segunda parte na segunda frase uma coisa que seria mais imaginativa uma coisa mais assim que você está meio que buscando alguma coisa yes. so, so, yeah, may, may, maybe you can we can start from from just uh, playing the last The, the last course, you, you have the La Major, of course. Right? Slightly different. And then, then you can do. How do this? You play like, like this or ballet? Ele está perguntando a digitação que você usa. So, é com, 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 como chama? É, se você usa o mesmo dedo apertando todas as cordas ou se você usa é, três dedos? Não, é só pestaninha mesmo. Ah, pe pestana, é, pestana. Ele disse... Uh, Mar Marcin, ele disse que ele usa um pouco de barra para fazer as cordas. Não, isso é bem, isso é bem, porque eu nunca joguei a peça, então eu estava só perguntando a ele quais dedos ele está usando. Então, o primeiro passo would be to, to recognize the difference between these two chords. And the second one. Right? Then the second step would be to play a little bit more. Right? So there is the tempo un poco diferente, eh? un poco different. The, the, there is diff different tempo. There is a different energy, maybe different color. But very, very delicate uh, difference. But definitely, what I don't want is to play the same, because then something is missing if we play the same, right? So it's kind of important to find the difference. Um, e, tá. E, e, ele disse que, que que nessas duas frases de, de três acordes é importante que você dá uma intenção para eles, uma, uma, uma direção. Que Na primeira, ele fez o primeiro acorde um pouco mais... É, é com, 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 uma, com um crescendo, 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 e na segunda parte ele foi mais um diminuindo. Um di, diminuindo. Well, you know, crescendo, diminuindo, maybe it's too, uh, too extreme. É, ele falou que cres, crescendo e diminuindo seria muito, muito extremo, mas para ter uma, 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 alguma, uma, uma, alguma, algum elemento diferente nessas duas frases. I think, Rafael, let's try just two chords. This one. Vamos testar esses dois acordes. And... Yes. Bravo. Mm -hmm. So, one more time. Mais uma vez. Yes. 
And now... So you see, you, you did it beautiful, but I think for us, for musicians, it's also, also important to really know what is, the, what is the difference. The first motif was very much in the tempo. The second, time, the second motif, we kind of slow down the last, the last chord, right? Because we play. Ele disse que o é, para nós como músicos é muito importante saber a diferença dos motivos. Que o primeiro é mais a tempo e o segundo é, pode ser um pouquinho mais devagar. Right? Ok. Um so, and now, and now another element. This one here. Outro elemento. Uh, so. So instead of playing it exactly the same, you can play the first one a little bit excited. Huh? Nice. So, so at the moment, at the moment, you see, you see the same elements in the music, but uh, in a, with a different harmony or with different notes expressing slightly different character i think it's important for us not to make not to play them play them similar but just to present a very delicate but still different e quando a gente tá vendo o mesmo os mesmos elementos fra, os mesmos elementos as mesmas mesmas frases é, em, em harmonias diferentes é, é importante a gente fazer alguma algumas sutis diferenças alguns é, uh, contrastes pequenos uh, nesses motivos. Yes, and, and and I think the most difficult the most difficult aspect of this is that the change is not big, eh? because we are in a in an opening um, uh, opening movement of this sonatina, which is generally very positive. So the changes I am talking about are very delicate, but still, they are. É, ele disse que numa, numa peça que mesmo quando estamos na, na abertura do, de uma peça como a sonatina é, é mais difícil ainda fa fazer essa, essa, essas diferenças porque está tá no começo da, 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 da música são, são diferenças pequenas não são coisas gritantes mas a, ainda assim elas são importantes sim there's there's also an, um, one two three the, the this this motif the the D major chord in a in a fourth fourth line. Uh, you, you don't play rhythmically clear. Can can I listen to it? Ele disse que o, o acorde de, de Ré maior que você está tocando no, no quarto pentagrama, quarta linha, é, ritmicamente não está muito claro. How you did Como que você fez? No, I think I think that uh, maybe you can give a little accent on the B. So Pode it's acentuar um pouquinho o, o, o C. Because basically what we is this rhythm um ta 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 tim pa um ta 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 tim pa um ta 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 tim pa what you play is um ta 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 tim pa um ta 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 so I don't hear this eight two sixteens four sixteens and two eight um ta 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 tim pa um can can you sing it for me like this um ta 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 tim pa um 
Você pode, canta, você pode cantar lá esse ritmo para ele? Para dançar o feijo rítmico? E agora to, toca com esse ritmo que você cantarolou? From, from here, right? so much in a hurry because you do something like this. Uh, isso foi meio pior, você não precisa to tocar com afobado. So. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can play just, just this group. It's not difficult. It must be much more calm and much, much more uh, relaxed. The same, the next one. Isso não deve soar como uma coisa dif difícil, complicada. Deve soar como uma coisa relaxada. O mesmo com a, pro com a próxima frase. Let's, let's try the second thing now. Can you play it? Un poco, un poco más o es. Yes. Okay. One, one more question. One question. I'm just wondering about the F sharp. Should it be so accented? O, o, o Fá sustenido de, deve ser tão acentuado? Ele está perguntando isso. It, 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 is, it, it is a little bit more like... previous pieces we have so many rhythmical aspects here we have so many beautiful uh, rhythmical groups so no yes which is one more basically como na peça anterior porque Try this, try this uh, part. Ele me disse que é como na peça anterior, que temos... Ele... Can, I, can, I, can I translate? P posso traduzir? Não, that's why I... Ainda? I just want him to play from this part, just from this cantabile part. Ok, ele está pedindo para você tocar nesse trecho. One, one more thing, this is a, is a upbeat to one, right? so it's so not the three softer and one louder. Yes, no, no, it's... And maybe, 
maybe you can continue with the second of all, uh, second second of all, right? Okay. Hmm? Sorry, Marcin. He, he can continue with the with the second part. Huh? Continue. Uh, uh. Para você ir direto para a segunda parte. To say that this this what I hear is is very beautiful. You know this this cantando part was very very nice, very lyrical, very contrasting. So congratulations, very beautiful. Ele me disse que gostou muito, que foi muito musical, muito muito linda essa parte cantando. Ele gostou muito. Parabéns. There is still there is still something you may consider because, for example, the the, the C sharp we play as the loudest one. Que ainda tem algumas coisas que você pode considerar que o dó sustenido você tocou com uma nota mais alta. But what what will happen if we diminish the dynamic there and do? Mas o que acontece se a gente diminuir a, a intensidade nessa parte? Probably probably this is becoming even more lyrical. Even more Prova sentimental. Provavelmente isso vai ficar ainda mais uh, 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 lírico, mais sentimental. Try, try if you like it. Uh, vê, vê se te agrada. So always, always when we learn something new, we have to reduce the problem to the minimum. Uh, I was talking uh, a bit about this. So don't play really from here, but maybe just. You first you can play the C sharp one octave lower. Try. Sustenido uma oitava abaixo. Yes, and now. Yes, with the, with the same feeling, right? It's... O mesmo sentimento. Uh -huh. Intenção, não sentimento. Now another thing because uh, this is also difficult uh, to put the, the B here. So so it it may happen that the accent on the C sharp is not something what you want. It's just something what is happening because of the jump, right? So. Uh. So you have to be very very careful. Ele disse que possivelmente você está dando esse, essa ênfase no, no dó sustenido por causa que você tem o baixo em si e como é uma mudança complicada isso pode estar tá fugindo do seu controle por causa do si você está acentuando o dó sustenido uhum. e você tem que tomar cuidado com isso uhum. Anyway, 
right. So uh, the, the last the last sentence because we have to finish. So uh, if there is, if, you see, by playing just the melody and doing this, you have a pure freedom, right? Then you do the same. And it's still fine. And then suddenly, if so, if there is an accent, you have to ask yourself, is it because of the jump in the left hand? Is it because of the energy in the right hand? So if, the, if this is the right hand, you just have to place the thumb here and do, do this. And more playing with a, with a wrist and not so much with the impulse, right? So just... And very slow, very slow attack. Imagine, uh, you know, this is something what I very like. Uh, the last thing that you you slide on the string and you play very slowly. Yes. Bravo. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, thank you for uh, playing for me. It was really cool to connect from Germany to Brazil. How is the weather where you are? It's nice, warm, hot. No? Como que a Ivy disse que foi muito bom fazer uma conexão da da Alemanha para o Brasil e está perguntando como está o clima aí, se está quente. Aqui em Belo Horizonte em específico está tá quente. Okay. Um, Recente. Tem olho preto, tá super frio, tá vendo? Aqui é, é complicado, né? Uh, é. They said, like, uh, Rafael said, his city is very hot, quite warm, and uh, the professor said, and his city is not so so hot, a bit cold. Okay, so in in a, in a Münster right now, uh, we have. I just show you. We have just nine nine grass. Oh, it's not so bad. <laughs> Ele disse que na cidade dele em Münster, na Alemanha, está nove graus. Okay. Thank you very much. I have to go for dinner because it's time for the Thank dinner. You. So I hope one day to see you live. In ele person. agradeceu que ele tem que ir para o jantar, para o jantar, mas que ele espera que em, em uma próxima oportunidade possamos encontrar presencialmente. Ok. And okay. enjoy music, enjoy life. All the best to you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.